Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Nanam Paramam Dheyam. Knowledge is supreme. Okay, so uh, let us continue our study of uh, case spectrum. So what we did, I will just recall briefly that we have defined a map VK from ideals in the polynomial ring Kx1 to Xn. to the power set of k power n. Any ideal A goes to Vk of A. Vk of A is by definition all those points in k power n so that all polynomials in the ideal A vanish at that point. Now actually this I could have taken the radical ideals not only all ideals but I can restrict these two only radical ideals. So I will write here R. R is for radical ideals because uh, uh, ideal and its radical ideal will give you the same uh, set of points. So to illustrate it, see suppose you take, uh, let us take a polynomial uh, n equal to 2, so polynomial ring in two variables and suppose I take the ideal generated by x1 square, this is ideal. So what will be the picture there? Now the picture I have to draw in K2. K2 is a plane, a fine plane. And what will be the picture for, that means x1 is, x1 square is 0. But x1 square is 0 means, that is this. But line twice, but the picture is same. So this is x1 equal to 0 that is x2 axis or same as this is same as x2 x1 square is 0 or more generally all this is same as picture will look same but what we are losing something we are losing uh, multiplicities. So when you go from algebra to geometry something is getting lost this information is getting lost that this is double line. So this is very important and this will cause also a lot of concern later. First of all note also note that not every subset is a, in the image of Vk. So for example if k is infinite and n equal to 1 and suppose I, so now what we have to do we have uh, k here and these ideals in radical ideals in the polynomial ring in one variable. Now if I take infinitely many points here, k is infinite field, so if I take infinite subset, if I take w to be infinite, it cannot be v of an ideal, v of any ideal a cannot be this w because ideals here ideals in these are principal. So they are generated by one polynomial. So therefore ideal is generated by one polynomial only f and this vk will be vk of f that means the zero set of the one polynomial in one variable and that we know it is a finite set and therefore it cannot be dw. Therefore all subsets are not in the image. So when we are hoping that this is a bijective map that is not correct so we have to adjust it. So we have to see which subsets come into the image. For that I want to define a map in the other way. So for this we define the map now in the other way. So I want to define a map which will be called ik. This map will be from uh, the power set of k power n to 
radical ideals of the ring k x1 to xn. And what is the map? The map is take any subset w and map it to now I want an ideal. So that I that is i k w is by definition this is by definition all those polynomials f in k x1 to xn such that f on any a is 0 for all a in w. All those polynomials which vanish on every element of w you put it together. Now you check that this i k w is an ideal in k x1 to xn. Not only ideal, it is a radical ideal. Why that? Because what do we have to check? If I have two polynomials here, then the sum and difference is also there. But that is clear because if you have f of a is 0, g of a is 0, then f plus g at evaluated at a is same thing as f a plus g a or f a minus g a and both are 0. Therefore, it is a subgroup. Then you have to check that if I have another polynomial, arbitrary polynomial h in n variable and if um, h times f is also there because uh, h times f evaluated at any a in w is h a times f a, but f a is 0 therefore, so it is clearly an ideal. Also similarly, it is a radical ideal if f is there that means f of a is 0 for all a in w. So, if somebody is in the radical then the power will be here, but then the power f n a is 0 then f of a is 0. So, therefore, it is a radical ideal. So, we have defined therefore a map from a power set of k n to power set of other to the radical ideals of this. Now, the big question is, is I want to say that this i k and v k what is the relation between the maps i k and v k and that was given by the strong null standards. So, this is Hilbert's um, strong null standards. That says that if I take if I take any ideal A and then take V k and apply I k then I get back A. This is therefore that means what that means this i k and v k they are inverses of each other on what on so so v k on the image of v k so v k is a map from uh, radical ideals of k x1 to xn to the image I want to take only the image of it. So, these are called affine k algebra x a. What is an affine k algebra x a? It is of the form v k of some ideal. So, this is also denoted by a f f k k power n. These are affine algebra x sets in k power n this is a subset of power set of k power n. So, what are these by definition these are precisely so an uh, affine algebraic set is precisely v k of some ideal a where a I can assume to be radical ideal. So, this map has the inverse namely i k but that is under the assumption this is under the assumption that k is algebraically close. This was proved by Hilbert in 1863. So, that gives that gave a way to study affine algebraic sets in k power n with the help of radical ideals. So, therefore, 
from that onwards study of ideals in a polynomial ring uh, maximal ideals etc that became very very important because that corresponding to study of the geometry this is this geometry is called a fine algebraic geometry that study is now equivalent to studying ideals in a polynomial ring in the polynomial ring k x1 to x n so this gave a two way traffic because when we want to study ideal then you study corresponding and then so on so that became this became this is known as classical algebraic geometry but then remember this this has a big assumption k is algebraically close so for example one cannot study real algebraic geometry with this we need a different tool for that all right so this was what the motivation for hilbert null standards which deduce hilbert null standards from the normalization lemma normalization lemma is more general and now uh, in the remaining time i want to now generalize this also so um, remember to each suppose i have a field k what we understand from this study is for a field and for r where r is a k algebra of finite type to study this we have attached a set to this that is k spectrum k spec r k spec r is by definition home k algebras from r to k and this also you could identify with the maximal ideals m in spmr such that the residue field r by m is k this is the k spectrum this is obviously a subset of the maximal ideals and we have seen example there are maximal ideals which are not here for example when k is real numbers then x square plus 1 which is a maximal ideal ideal generated by x square plus 1 is a maximal ideal but it is not k spectrum it is not in the k spectrum and this is further enlarged to spec of r this is the set of all prime ideals the set of all ideals in r now we have only defined a topology here and that too we had an assumption that this k is r is k algebra of finite type so in general we don't have k field a ring may not uh, contain a field and they may not be finite type or field and so that we want to define more generally a topology on this bigger set on the spectrum set and therefore i can take a induced topology here this is not there so more generally what do we have for any ring r if r is any commutative ring any commutative ring we have these two sets spmr which is contained in the spec of r and we have we know this set is non empty when r is non zero this is under the assumption that r is non zero this is what known as krull's theorem krull's theorem says that if you have a non zero commutative ring then there is at least one maximal ideal in r and this was proved by using zorn's lemma and therefore uh, there is a prime ideal there may be many prime ideals so we want to now define a topology on we want to define topology on this bigger set spec of r 
so that means what we want to define we want to give you a collection of subsets of this which satisfy properties of the closed set in a topological space that means we want to give a collection which is which has empty set which has a whole space and which is closed under arbitrary intersection and which is closed under finite union if i have such a collection then that will define a topology on that set and these sets this collection uh, elements of this collection will be precisely the closed sets in that topology so we are looking for a collection of so we are looking for a subset of the power set of the spectrum okay and what is that now i will now define so obviously the ideals will come to the help so take any ideals ideals in the arbitrary in in the ring r and i want to define a map from this to the power set of spec of r and this map i have called it v so take any ideal a and now i want to define v of a and what is v of a should be a subset of a spec of r so what is this by definition this is by definition all those prime ideals p in spec r such that p should contain the given ideal a <coughs> so i have defined v of a now there is no suffix k here because there is no field now first of all this ideal this ideal v of a and v of radical of a they are same because if p contains a then p will also contain radical of a because p is a prime ideal radical of recall that radical of an ideal is by definition all those elements f in the ring r such that f power n belongs to a for some n so this is the radical and in general radical of the ideal contains a if it equality holds here then one call that ideal a to be radical ideal so because this map ideal a and radical of ideal a they go to the same set so i will we will concentrate on the radical ideal so so we therefore think we the map from radical ideals in r in r to the power set of the spectrum a going to v of a now again we only consider the image of v and then try to define a map we would try to define a map in the other direction that is will be map i so what is it we have given any subset y of the spectrum and we want to define i of y i of y is by definition you look at all those prime ideals in y so intersection p p where is in i y so therefore this makes sense this is an ideal not only it is an ideal its intersection of ideals and intersection of radical ideals therefore it is again a radical ideal so this indeed belongs to the radical ideals in r and now like we have checked the properties of this v the what are the properties we should check we should check so this is a proposition this will check that the collection v of a where a varies in the radical ideals of r this collection satisfy the properties of 
क्लोज सेट्स क्लोज सेट्स इन ए टोपोलॉजी वॉट इज दैट मीन दैट इज वन वी ऑफ वन इज एम टी सेट v of 0 is whole spectrum so that means the whole space is there empty set is there secondly second i have we have to check that um, it is uh, union of v of some ideal arbitrary family this is intersection of v of ais so that means given v of ais a family v of ais index by i then their intersection is also of the same form and third one that if i take the product ideal a times b which is same thing as intersection ideal which is a union of a and v of a union v of b so this is also easy to check that see if you translate it what do you want to prove it is very easy this means if a prime ideal contains the product of two ideals then it contains either of them so similarly if prime ideal contains all these guys then it contains it is belong to the intersection so these are precisely the these are the properties that closed sets satisfy in a topology so therefore this topology so the topology uh this topology this defines a topology on spec of r and it's called is a risky topology on r on spec of r all right so when i have to check these properties but um one one possibility to check this i want to uh, give give that notation uh, so Uh, what are the open sets so open sets are precisely the complements open sets in spec of r r precisely the spec of r minus v of a minus v of a also these are called d of a so what is this by definition so all those prime ideals p in r such that p is not here that means p does not contain a then it is there right so these are precisely the open sets so now uh, what is v of a ah, um, uh, another important thing when should note here is that so when the ring is noetherian when r is noetherian then every ideal a in r is finitely generated but then this v of a and v of a generating set are same finitely generated so that is a is generated by f1 to fr then v of a is same thing as v of f1 to fr and therefore we only have to consider finitely many elements at a time no so therefore what will be the complement of this so d of a which is spec r minus v of f1 to fr 
so these are precisely all those prime ideals p in r such that p is not here that means at least one of the fi is not in p so fi is not in p for some i from 1 to r so for example if what will be d of a single single element f this is spec of r minus v of f which is all those prime ideals p such that f is not in p so these are the basic open sets so therefore what we noted is this collection df where f is in r is form basic open sets for the zariski topology on spectrum all right so uh, to check things this the following notation is very very useful so let me uh, write that let me explain how does one write neatly so first of all for psychological reasons one like to have a notation for a topological space to be capital x so given a ring here r i have this spec r this is a set of all prime ideals this i would like to denote this by x because we are used to topological space by capital letter x okay so and how how are we going to change our notation when we want to stress upon the properties of prime ideals then we will write the notation p and when you want to set uh, stress about the points in a topological space then i will write it x but just to keep track this p corresponds to this x i will write p suffix x just to remember that this p we have identified with that x all right now therefore in this notation um okay so i have the ring r here i have r by p x here now this i have performed the algebraic operation therefore i want to write it as p x so this is this is a residue map this is modulo p x map this is integral domain and therefore it has a quotient field so quotient field of r by p x this quotient field i want to denote by kappa x because it depends only on x x means px so this is a field this is a field and we have a natural map here see this is a ring homomorphism this is also ring homomorphism because this is embedding of the integral domain in a quotient field now if i have an element f here i denote the in general elements of the ring by letters f g etc like we denote the polynomials because i always want to think rings as polynomial rings and therefore uh, uh, the choice of notation is from that implication so f goes to f bar here by reading mod px and this f bar will go to somebody here that image i am going to denote by f of x this is the image of f in this quotient field it comes f bar and then this now this is a ring homomorphism this is a ring homomorphism means what if i take f and another element g f of g and take its image directly or i take the image of f and image of g and then this is equal to this plus this because it's a ring homomorphism 
Similarly, f times g evaluated at x, I will write it as evaluated at x. This is fx times gx. So, if this product is 0, then one of them has to be 0 because we are in a, images are in the field. So, therefore, what will be my definition of v of a now? Let us, what is, for example, v of f will be what? These are all those prime ideals p such that p contains f that means f belongs to p. So, this is the same thing if I want to write in the new notation now. These are all those elements x in x. Remember this p x we have identified with x such that now this will be what? f belong to p x. So, that means f of x is 0. This is the image of f in, in the residue field k x. So, therefore, this, this becomes this gives the same feeling as what we did it for k, k spectrum. And therefore, if you adopt the same checking, it will be very easy. So, I suggest you adopt the for checking that they satisfy the properties of the closed set. Use this notation, it will be very, very helpful. This notation was due to growth ending. Growth ending is the one who change algebraic geometry to very abstract algebraic geometry and it gave lot of important results. With this he proved lot of important results. Okay, so, with this I will stop.